Hello everyone, this hour on Verbling, the next in my great short story series. We're on great short story 24, Herbert Gold's Death in Miami Beach. And we're going to be doing part two today. So what we're going to do is first briefly go over some strategies to help you when you're reading a difficult story which is a great way to learn English and to acquire vocabulary. So we'll summarize what we've read, we'll look at vocabulary and talk a bit about strategies, then we'll plunge into part two of Herbert Gold's story. So before we begin, a little bit about me. I'm just going to mute your microphone, Daniel, because it sounds a little noisy out there. Um, quick introduction. I'm John Eric, your verbling teacher for this hour. I'm an American teacher from New York, hanging out in Lisbon, Portugal, to bring you this class. By the way, here are three quick rules to help you participate. Don't forget to turn off, tune in, and open up, which means turn off your microphone when you're not speaking so we can keep the classroom quiet. Tune in to the new words that you're learning when we are speaking that way and use them actively so that I can correct you and that way I can give you the feedback you need. Finally, open up to your classmates. Relax and have fun. We're all here to learn and this is a safe and respectful place to practice your English. And that is a little bit about me. I'm going to put our graphic on screen so when you open the link you will see this picture, this image, as the first thing you see. Um, let me also say hello to some new faces up there. Whoops, sorry, didn't want to do that. I didn't want to do that. I almost lost my picture there. So let's say hello. Let's say welcome back to Daniel. Welcome back, Daniel. Hello. Nice to see you. Nice to see you too. Welcome back, Tati. Are you out there, Tati? Uh-oh, I don't hear you, Tati. When you get your microphone on, say hello. And let's say hello to a new face, Maha. Hello, Maha. How are you? Hi, teacher. Good. Very good, Thank very good. And where are you from, Maha? Saudi Arabia. From Saudi Arabia. Okay, very good. So. Hello, now, hello. Ah, is that you, Tati? Uh -huh. Ah, okay, very good. So. In the last class on Tuesday, we read the first part of this story. What I, and if you weren't here, it's not a problem. You can always read what we're reading in class, and then afterwards you can catch up, something like that. Um, but what I would like to do is to start to help you with when you're reading something that's above your level. Because these stories, they're not made for language learners. They're made for for language speakers. So there's a lot of vocabulary. It's not easy. I want to talk briefly about some strategies that you can use. So, welcome back, Carmen, by the way. Nice to see you. Good morning. So here's what I'm going to do. To talk about strategies, I'm going to share my screen. Go to the document that you, you should have the link to this. If you, let me just, yeah. The very top of the chat window, you'll see the link to our text. I'll post it again here in the chat window. If you don't see it, click on that. If you don't see it on the inside, hold on. Well, I can't click there. All right, so what we're going to do is start off with the first important strategy. It says useful information. Context, well, that means that you know about the author or you know about the story. And we did talk a little bit about the context in the first class, who Herbert Gold was, when he wrote the story, the fact that he had a lot of connections with the literary crowd. I'm not going to put those notes there for now. We'll skip it. But the next thing says plot, learning to summarize. Now that we can do as a group. As a group, what I'd like us to do is to summarize what we've read so that we can keep the big picture in mind. The first thing we've got to ask is, is this a normal story? Is this a story like a Hollywood movie with a beginning, middle, and end? So 
What do you think about that class? It's a crazy history. <laughs> it's a crazy history or yeah. story? History. History or story? Story. Story. I'm hearing the word history. No, no, no. Story. Story. <laughs> okay, very good. It sounds like 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 a essay written by a writer. He uh, when he traveling, he was traveling around the Miami. It does seem like an essay. Yes. It has that quality, but it's not. It's fiction. Uh, but yeah, it's something about the kind of writing that was happening at the time. It was a kind of a movement towards confessional writing. Sometimes they call it the confessional school. Um, so there, and then you have, we have to think about what that means. Why were they writing that way? Not just Herbert Gold, but his beatnik friends, like William Burroughs, although he was more experimental. Jack Kerouac, I think he didn't really like Kerouac so much, but his close friend Allen Ginsberg, of course, has a similar style with different influences. So I'm going to page uh, three of our notes. I'll share my screen when I can. Let's see if we can come up with a group summary of the first part so that we can keep the big picture in mind. So what happened? Let's see if we can group it into parts or episodes. Okay? So, Carmen, what's one thing you remember from the story? One part, uh, one episode, one scene? Something. Well, on the, on the whole, um, he, he's a writer, so after uh, a long period of writing, he took a vacation. So he went down to the south of Miami, to Key, to Key West and Cuba. And uh, I remember he, he, when he was uh, in Key West, um, he went to this uh, total uh, slaughterhouse, mm -hmm. and uh, he witnessed how the the turtles were slaughtered, <laughs> just for just for fun. <laughs> and fun. yeah, and that and, and then I remember too at the end of the story, the chapter, uh, the uh, part one, uh, mm -hmm. that episode about the the cockroach and the ants. Uh -huh, right. great, uh, losing all the juices and that sort of thing. <laughs> when someone stepped on, when you, you, I, you, what, was he? It was him who stepped on on the concrete. I'm not quite sure about it. Was it him? Right. Yes, it was him. Yeah, it was him. Yeah, it was him. Yes. Was and then how the ants um, uh, were just eating the concrete a lot. Well, eating the concrete, and that's it. <laughs> right. That's what I remember. Oh. Sounds good so far. Let me just say a quick hello to some new faces who joined us. So, Daniel, is it Daniel? I can't see it. Yes, hello. Hi. Am I saying your name right? Because I can't read it very well. Is it Daniel? Yes, that's correct. Very good. Where are you from, Daniel? From Kazakhstan. From Kazakhstan? Yes. Ah, uh, you've been in a class before, haven't you? Yes, yes. Yeah. Okay, I remember. I remember more or less. <laughs> All right, nice to have you back. And let me say a quick hello also to Antonio. Uh, Antonio Lopez. Hello, Antonio. How are you? Hello. I'm fine. Very good. And where are you from, Antonio? I am from Spain, like Daniel um, Carmen. From where in Spain? Yeah, we met before. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, but, I, but if I don't... The problem is if... I, I, I don't see any image. I just see black where you are. So I have nothing to associate you with. Uh, so I, you have to remind me. I associate uh, an image, but I don't know what, what happened. Oh, no or, problem, no problem. But it's just for me to remember who you are. So where are you from in Spain? Sorry? Where are you from in Spain? Ah, and so it's uh, Almeria, Andalusia, but Andalusia. In, in, the, in the east. Of Andalusia. All right, Antonio from Andalusia. I will remember that. Okay, no problem. Uh, so we're doing a quick review. Uh, we've got to actually hurry up. We're going to lose time. We're doing a quick review and looking at strategies about how to handle difficult reading. Then we're going to read part two of our story. So I'm going to share my screen since we got a full class now. And when you open the link in the chat window and you go to page three, you'll see the things that Carmen said 
I just put them there, where it says learning to summarize. And I think that's a good structure for what we read so far. It's like little episodes. So we got a little bit of background. The narrator is a writer. And then Carmen said he goes to Key West. He visits a turtle slaughterhouse. I don't know why I capitalized turtle and slaughterhouse. I'm not sure why I did that. And then there's a scene with a dead cockroach and ants. <laughs> okay. I'll add another thing. Go for it. Absolutely. Uh, the death of the old man in the ah, restaurant. Ah, okay. So. That's no, bad. he was not dead. Well, wait, 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 wait and see. <laughs> we didn't get that far yet. <laughs> she looked dead. Blue, blue skin. <laughs> exactly. Death of the, death of the of the of the man, and with with he's got a wife with him, I believe, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. His wife. Or I'll, I'll just say uh, uh, the I'm going to call him the Bromo man. Mm, yeah. Because <laughs> his wife is asking for Bromo. Okay, great. So class, for those of you who are here, look at these points. In fact, let's number them. So it's a little bit easier to see. How do I number these? I'm going to turn these into numbers. Okay. Ah, oh, doesn't let me put numbers. <laughs> okay, look at these letters, A to E. Under each letter, I'd like to add one or two important points that you remember from the story so that we have a kind of a quick outline. All right? So, narrator is a writer. What other background information might be important? This is for all of you as a class, so speak freely. Anything you remember that we might want to add here? Only the essential, nothing extraneous. The like word was, so late. Ah, mm. isolate, isolation is an important concept. Yes. I agree. It's a bit a lot of time. Important concept and story. Okay. He thinks the uh, state of madness can be defined as an extreme of isolation, but he thinks that there is a false madness uh, induced by, for example, by travel. And I don't know, that's why he, uh, he started his travel to Miami. Uh, it was in the winter of 1958. He, he, uh, he traveled. Around Miami Beach, Key West, and Havana. Very good. False. So I'm going to put you said false madness, right? Yes. Okay, so we can pose that maybe as a question. Uh, you said maybe that's the reason. So is that why he's traveling? Because he keeps saying that he's got no reason. No one asked him to do any of this. So does he need to experience this false madness? Does he, does he need to experience this for some reason? Is that the reason why he's doing it? Very interesting point. Uh, we know he goes to Key West. We can say something about that. But I think in the A C, D, and E, those are the kind of the main scenes that we've encountered. So about the turtle slaughterhouse, what I remember is that the turtles are crucified. Mm, yeah. I can't can't spell the word turtles apparently. There we go. Turtles are are if I remember he right, he says crucified oh, I can't write. Cru <laughs> fine. There we go. Like thieves. I think that's how he describes them. So that's something that I remember, an image I remember. They're on their backs. Um what about the scene with the cockroach and the ants? Okay, we've got the oozing. We've got the oozing guts of the of the roach, <laughs> right? And then we've got got the the ants devouring it. Oops, I can't speak and write at the same time. I should say ants. Okay, is there anything else we might want to put there? Okay, 
for me, there's one more thing we might want to say, which is that he revisits the roach three times. Mm -hmm. And it's different each time. He steps on it. So oh, I'm not going to put all the notes, but he steps on it. He comes back, still there. Someone else has stepped on it. And then the third time, it's gone and there's no trace of it. Is, is it did I get that right? Someone swept it away, if I remember right. Yes. It's something, some, okay, mm. something like that. What about Bromo Man? We didn't read the whole episode yet. We just started. So anything you would want to make a note about here that you think is important with Bromo Man? Bro yeah, Frank, for instance, a waiter, doesn't uh, pay any attention to the woman screaming that he's dying. Ah, Frank. Mm -hmm. I think it's a cook, a cooker. Cook. Frank, the cook, the cook, right, ignores Bromo Man. Okay. But, he but, remember he he has remembered about about the narrator. Uh, what 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 did he prefer? Frank remembers. Yeah, Frank. What, what the, food uh, narrator preferred? Frank remembers uh, the narrator's order. Say the order. If, uh, I don't remember what it was, but yes, he remembers. Bromo is like aspirin. 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 Right. But it's in. But it fizzes in water. But it hmm. fizzes in water. Aspirin is apparently not spelled like that. There we go. Okay. So now that we've all revisited the beginning of the story, for it, let's talk to someone new like uh, Daniel or Antonio. By the way, welcome back, Amir. I didn't see you come in. Sorry. Uh, let's talk to someone new like Antonio and Daniel. You didn't read the first part of the story. What's your picture of the story so far now that you hear some details about it? Do you start to have an image of the story in your mind? Uh, many, many things to death. Many, many ways to death. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. But I want to ask Daniel specifically because he oh, wasn't sorry. here. And Antonio specifically because he wasn't here. The two of you, now that you've heard some details of the story, do you start to have an image of the of what happened, of the characters? Do you start to have a sense of the story? I, I don't know. Sorry, I I where is the story? Or oh, I have to uh, to imagine a story. No, no, you don't have to imagine a story. <laughs> we're, we're we're reading. No, 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 we're reading. Where, but the Just story. The link. Where I can? Where is the link? Uh, In the chat window. Click it. See it. No. Yes. Okay. So open that and download it. You can also look at the screen because I'm going to share it with you in a minute too. And what about you, Daniel? Now that you've heard some details, do you have a sense of the story and the characters? Do you have some rough idea what's going on, or is it completely confusing? Excuse me. <laughs> I I I. I I don't understand what it was. Okay. So if you if you open the link if you open Hello Daniel? No, oh, Daniel disappeared. So I can't help you if you leave. Oh no, you're still there. Oh, okay, sorry. It wasn't you who disappeared. <laughs> okay. I thought you disappeared. So Daniel, if you open the link and you go to page three and you look at this this outline that we just created, it gives you a sense of the little scenes, just like the scenes in a movie, the little scenes in the story in the beginning. So first we have the background. Background means the basic information. We know that the narrator, the person telling the story, is a writer. And he talks about isolation. It's an important concept to him. He talks a little bit about madness, and he thinks that madness is a form of isolation. And then, as Yuki pointed out, he talks about how traveling 
is a kind of false madness because you're isolated when you travel. And we ask the question, maybe maybe that's why he's traveling. Maybe he needs to experience this in some it, way. It, uh, experience uh, that uh, you can experience without giving up their, your return ticket. So uh, this kind of experience uh, after uh, involved in uh, travel, uh, prison, prisoning, and uh, ill in hospital. You can experience it in tra while traveling, while being in prison, and while being ill. Is that yes. right? Yes, oh, when you are, okay. you are in such a situation, you 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 get into the false madness. And and also, let's not forget the title of the story: death. <laughs> the title of the story is "Death in Miami Beach," and isolation, I guess, is a form of death. Or he's trying to talk about this, maybe how we experience it, or how we prepare for it, or something. So there must be some connection. So, Daniel and Antonio, what we learned so far, even if you weren't here, is that he goes to Florida and Cuba, to Key West. He visits a slaughterhouse, which is like a zoo. Children go there to look at the turtles. So it's a kind of a zoo, but then they kill the turtles, and they put them in cans, and people eat them. So it's a kind of a strange, weird ambiance, right? Children are there to see the animals, but then they're killed. And he notices that the turtles are crucified. So and then he talks about going to Miami and he remembers going to breakfast accidentally stepping on a bug. <laughs> and he's got this, he keeps returning to this image after breakfast someone else steps on the bug. He notices the ants eating the bug, taking the roach, taking bits of it away to feed the colony. And then at the same breakfast place, there's a strange incident of a man and his wife asking for uh, basically aspirin, fizzy aspirin. You put it in water and it bubbles. The guy looks like he's dying. He's turning blue. So this, this um, outline that we just created, it helps you to prepare for the story. But also, if you've read it and it was difficult, it helps you put things into the big picture so that you don't lose where you are. So this is a great technique if you're reading something that's difficult and above your level. You don't need to know every word, but you do need to keep the big picture in mind, what's actually happening. So this is one technique that we can use to do that. So that's my purpose here. Okay, so Antonio and Daniel, Hopefully that helps a little bit, and we can add to the uh, outline after we read part two. So let's jump into part two right now. Give me a second to open this up. Okay, part two begins here, but I'm going to quickly read the last paragraphs just so we can remember exactly where we were. Okay, so follow along, and then I'm going to turn it over as we know. Stories are traditionally begun by Carmen, as we know. So, Carmen, you'll be first up. But listen, follow along for just a second. At the very bottom of the page, remember the woman shouting, oh, give my husband a bromo. The pharmacist was on the telephone, and the howling woman subsided in shrill spasms. Her husband swayed on the stool. Swayed means go back and forth. His eyes shut while his wife leaned, sobbing against his back to keep him from toppling onto the ground. Sobbing is crying. She refused to let anyone touch him in order to lay him on the floor, someone else's idea, as if the ministry would commit him once and for all to the hands of death. Naturally, my innards shrank from this. Innards is your guts your internal organs, like you have this terrible feeling in your gut. The layers of the self closed tight. The flower of feeling was shut, sealed. So he has to try to stop his emotions because he sees this guy dying and he doesn't want to get emotional or be afraid or be overwhelmed. 
I wanted to rush someplace, rush away, strike, destroy, kill, kill Frank, kill the hot rodder. Hot rodder is a guy who drives a race car, a hot rod, because a man was dying and no one could do anything. Thus, righteousness substitutes for being straight with the world. I was sly, scared. Thus, I occupied myself with rage at my friend Frank, that's the cook, who pretended to hear nothing and stubbornly refused to make the glass of bromo seltzer. Oh my God, what a terrible person. Carmen, let's pick it up in part two and let's find out what happens. Okay. Gypsy Miami Beach, part two. During the five minutes before the doctor arrived, the scene altered rapidly and tensely. Of course, all the breakfast, all the bre breakfast, yeah. breakfasters, but the determined hot rodder stopped the eating. The kid in the leather jacket asked for pretzels with his coke for sustained strength behind the wheel. <laughs> The rest of us drifted, lurking behind the sick man on his stool. On his stool, his wife wept and cursed and he and heaved out her sobs because no one would supply a bromo. Heaved, heaved, heaved. out her sobs. What do you What do you think that means? What does that look like to you if she's uh, heaving out her sobs? Uh, I don't have any idea. I don't know that verb. <laughs> what, what, what's a sob? What's a sob? Well, so it's when you're crying, you're... Exactly. <laughs> so heaving is like heavy, irregular breathing. <sighs> like, like panting, like panting for, for like panting. away or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. exactly. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay, keep going, Carmen. Then, abruptly, the man shook himself and opened his eyes and tried to stand up. Look, Daniel, he was not dead. He was not dead. <laughs> He wasn't dead. It's right. <laughs> he fooled us. Okay. okay. <laughs> he stumbled. His wife put him back onto the stool. He shook his head and mumbled. Then rapidly, the purple color di diminished. His eyes stopped the blind rolling. He began to talk with his wife. He was returning to the living. He and his wife had a whispered consultation. She nodded rapidly at him like a bird. She nodded rapidly. When do we nod? When we're saying yes or no? When you when nod you say yes, yes. When you, say when, you, yes. when you agree. Exactly. So obviously they've they've got some plan between the two of them because she's nodding like she's getting instructions or agreeing or something like that. Okay. So are you are you at all suspicious about this, Carmen? Yeah, yeah. Because. I and he was like uh, acting like he was going to die, he was going to pass away, and then suddenly, well, 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 what I don't understand is how 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 can how can he fake the color of his face because he was purple? Maybe he so. wasn't faking. <laughs> Maybe he was really purple. Ah, okay. But yeah, something is definitely a bit suspicious here. Something so, fishy in here. <laughs> something fishy. Very good. All right. Um. Well, I'm going to try to do kind of two paragraphs each so we can go around the room quickly. So the next part is dialogue. Um, so let's just, in, or if I go in order here, it looks like, Daniel, you're next. So let's take the dialogue. This part was fast, so take us to the end of the page at least. Okay. Suddenly, C alighted and flew out the door. The man left behind on the stool said horsely. Let horsely. Me horsely. Horsely is like when your throat is all raw and you kind of speak like this. Horsely. <laughs> horsely. Let me up. <laughs> Let me have a glass of water. Will Let you? me have a glass of water, will you, pal? Will you, pal? Frank gave him the water. <clears throat> now the doctor entered, rolling his slaves down and carrying his black bag open. He had apparently run uh, black in the tropical morning head. So how far Wait, away was he? Sorry. How far away was the doctor? Because uh, it says he, he had apparently run a block. Was he close or was he far? Close. He was close, but close. it's really hot. 
So the guy ran here from one city block. So he's close, but still, he ran, and he's probably not a young man. Just so we can kind of picture what's going on. Keep going, Daniel. Ha ha, said the Formula I dying man. Just like that. Ha ha ha. Hi, Doc. <laughs> You're the sick man. You're the, guy's, the sick man. The guy's dying, and he's laughing. Ha ha ha. Ha ha. Hi, Doc. Ha 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 ha. Yeah, okay. You're okay, the sick dying. man. You're the sick man, said the doctor. Dexy now. Ha ha ha. Don't touch me, Doc, said the old man, leaning away. Listen, Doc, it's a funny thing. My wi wife gets herself all excited, aggravated. Aggravated. You mean you're all right, the doctor said. Just like a little attack was all I had. Ha ha ha, said the old man. You're okay? What happened? Look, Doc. Oh, I, there you go. Okay. Look, Doc. I ain't been eating right. You know, enjoying myself. Ha ha ha. A little <laughs> attack. I get <laughs> them sometimes. Like a little attack is all. Okay, say the doctor firmly. You don't want me to look at you? Okay. He nodded briskly to the pharmacy and said, I got a, patch a passion in my office and shut it off again into the heat. Two words are important here, I think. Briskly and trotted. What kind of animal trots? When we think of the word trot. Does anyone know? What kind yeah, of animal? A horse. A horse trots, right? You hear the, the sound of the hooves, right? Mm -hmm. So the doctor is kind of like an animal. He runs through the heat like a stallion and he trots off like a defeated horse. Clip clop, clip clop. And briskly, he nodded briskly. What do you think that means? Fast or slow? Fast. Fast. Briskly. Fast. So the guy doesn't really <laughs> waste a lot of time with the conversation. He's sort of like this creature that they pull out when they need him and they send him off again into the heat. So Daniel, why do you think, I mean, what do you think happened? Carmen said she was a bit suspicious. Maybe he was faking it. But how could he be faking his color? The doctor comes out. The guy doesn't want to be seen. So what do you think happened here? Maybe uh, um, a piece of food in his throat. So he was like a asphyxiating. Asphyxiating, yes. Yeah, maybe. And do you think this happens all the time? Or yes, because I think he knows the doctor. He already knows the doctor. No, no, he doesn't know the doctor. Because no. The doctor says, oh, you're the patient? So oh, okay. they don't know each other. But it, it, does, it does seem at first like Frank knows the guy because Frank, ah, okay, Frank okay. doesn't react to him. Okay. So it, it kind of seems like this has happened before, right? <laughs> It's like a performance every day. It know? seems like it. It seems like it. We don't know, but I mean, that was my impression the first time I read okay. this story. Mm -hmm. Let's find out. Next on my list is Shadow. So Shadow, you're going to take the next two or three, uh, three short paragraphs here. Do you see where we are? Uh, I can't see anything. Uh, you see nothing on the screen? It was, it was, uh, share screen. Okay, but now, now I think there is nothing. Mm, no, you should be able to see the text. Listen, Shadow, what about opening the text on your computer? Um, I'm using my mobile now. Using what? I'm sorry? I'm using my mobile now. Uh. Well, I'm sharing the screen, so I don't know what to do. I'm sharing it, so if you can't see it, there's something wrong with the... Uh, with the uh, it, maybe it's too slow or something like that. I'm sharing the text. And it's very small if you're using a mobile. It would be very hard to see. Can you read a bubbling chat? I pasted it to you apart. Oh, look at that. Mm. That's why Yuki is the, the real teacher, because <laughs> he thinks about these things. 
<laughs> can you see the verbling chat in your mobile? I can. I, I think in a mobile file you can't. You can't so wait, wait, see. Um, sorry. Hang, hang on. Can you see my writing, the verbling chat? Can I see your writing? Uh, no. Um, no, I can't. Oh. Okay. Okay. Well, Yuki's going to send you a tablet computer, Shadow. Don't worry. <laughs> okay. And then, okay. And then you'll be able to see the text. So wait for, wait for that. You can download it or something. Okay. All right. <laughs> so you, you're just going to have to follow along. But listen, listen, don't forget. You can always go back you, to the class know, and, I mean, and download when, it. When, when Daniel was talking, I was, was, was reading... I can see the uh, screen, but after you talk with them, with him, you I must, don't... you must, uh, you must uh, choose uh, choose a uh, John picture. Click on I me. A... Yes. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna restart. The... Wait, wait a minute. All right. You can carry on, teacher. We I'll okay. Go. We we will carry on. Okay, Yuki, pick it up from the old man. The old man smiled and gazed without malice at Frank, mm, sorry, uh, who had refused him the bromo. Instead of leaving a tip, tip, he left him one word of explanation before he headed off after his wife. The word was dis depo deposited deposited on the counter behind him with a apolog apolog apologetic smile constipation constipation yes which means you cannot use the bathroom yes. <laughs> if you have <laughs> little <laughs> it's very by the way hard. by the way it <laughs> In Portuguese, constipation means you can't blow your nose. In it's English, it's the same Spanish. It's right. the same Spanish. It's a false friend. It's a false friend. It's a really false friend. <laughs> <laughs> you you don't want to go up to people and, and say, "Hi, I'm constipated." Uh, so in English, it means there's a blockage, but not in your nose. I won't say any more. Than that. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Keep going, Yuki. Uh, eggs in the plate of all other late breakfasters were left cold and shiny. Sh shiny. shiny. Yeah. The, the hodlarder alone has finished his sandwich, coke and pretzels. 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 Uh, pretzels. And, and left whist whistling, ang angry at last. I recharged an unformulated hostel hostility on Frank. Why the devil didn't you give the man his bromo? His reply seems an obvious bit of logical disquisition. Disquisition at, at this remove, but they are in, they are in the sharp shadow of panic and crisis, it struck me with the force of revelation. Loving a dirty cloth on the, on the counter, for formulating and reformulating a swear, a, a smear, smear, Good. Uh, a smear of grease before me. He said if he was dying of Heart attack. What what good what good would, would the bromo do him? And if he was not dying, what good is a bromo? Yes, but so I have to do do my job, but I don't have to listen to nuts. <laughs> Frank's a philosopher. <laughs> Frank is a very philosophical guy. I have oh. to do my job, but I don't have to listen to nuts. Yes, his <laughs> yes, his attitude is very calm very very and sympathetic. Cool. Yeah. Yes, Frank's a nice guy. <laughs> nice guy. <laughs> but you didn't say anything. That that woman was hysterical. His? Good. He looked at me with 
and disguised pity for my ignorance. That's why I didn't say anything. I, I've been in trouble for saying things before, before I leave, I learned. Right. So, hang on a second. So, what do you think? Was this a premeditated performance? Or was the guy really having an attack? And is Frank evil? Or does Frank just have his own philosophy? So what I, did we learn by the end of this conversation? I feel, I suppose that uh, Frank is not uh, evil. He's not, I agree. Yes, he know about the situation very well. Maybe he has the uh, same situation before. Ah, uh -huh. yeah. okay, yeah. He has the experience, experience the same situation, such a situation like this time before, maybe. I don't know. I don't think he's experienced the same situation, but I think he's learned from past experience to keep his mouth shut. Ah, yes, he's right. a very experienced person in such a situation. Yeah, he, remember, he's been here for 20 years, <laughs> flipping hamburgers for 20 years. <laughs> it's his only job. And later in the story, we find him again, years later. So it seems like this is what he does. But so this probably wasn't a performance. The guy probably really was having some kind of weird attack and turning blue. Um, but the reason Frank doesn't react is because he's learned not to get involved, basically. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, he's, and he's right. If the guy's having a heart attack, what's an aspirin going to do? Nothing. And if he's not dying, why should I give him a free <laughs> promo in the first place? <laughs> so he gets to save money and keep his job. Maybe Jack, in no, that's not a question. Go for it. No, but Juki, go for it first. Ah, sorry. Maybe in this place, uh, like uh, this place uh, in Havana, such a thing is often occurs. So in Miami, you mean? In Miami. In Miami, sorry. So yeah, yeah. it is uh, it is no worse to get to get to into. In such uh, events, it does. Yeah, Miami is is like this, painted like this strange place with lots of yes. old retired people and crazy people trying to entertain them and make money and stuff like that. So maybe it's kind of an eccentric place. What was your question, uh, Carmen? Yeah, in the text when he says uh, when Frank was formulating and reformulating. Yeah. Uh, the they, smear yeah, of Greece. Yeah, well, that's in Maine because for me, formulate is another thing. Uh, it means How that he's he's wiping the counter with a dirty rag. With and that verb, formulate. Is yeah. he like wiping? No, 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 no. It literally, there's a there's grease on the counter on the yeah. top of the counter, mm -hmm. and every time he moves the rag, he changes the shape of the grease. So, so. He's, so formulating and reformulating is just uh, the author's way of, of of saying that he's smearing the grease in different directions. But did you use that verb in that in that sense when you want to no. smear? Just mean, okay. It was just a, like okay, okay, okay. I get it. Is it like, like the author is doing it? Okay, then. <laughs> the author is 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 being tricky. Okay, okay. <laughs> I don't know why. What I was wondering. Yeah, I don't really know why exactly he's saying that. There's probably a reason because we formulate arguments. We don't that's formulate spheres of grace. Mm -hmm. But that's how he says it. Okay. So, Thank you. Okay, let's see if we can pick it up. One second here. Uh oh, lost my page. One second. Okay, here we go. So, first of all, Shadow, did you get your screen working or is it still hard to see? No, it's working now, but uh, you have to zoom in, please. I I'll, I can try. I don't know if it'll work. Hold on. Give me a second. Yeah. Let me see. Okay. Uh, well, it's... hold on. Because the problem is I can't. Okay. Uh, we got some status screen. Wait, wait, wait. Now, now it does. Okay. Mm -hmm. I got it now. Okay. Can you see it now? Shall yeah, I? I can. Yeah. Okay. Next okay. two paragraphs. It's going to be you and then Amir, and then we're back to the beginning if we have time. Keep going. Mm -hmm. 
uh, he wa he went back to work. The pharmacist was back in the cubicle. Cubicle. Cubicle, counting bills into a bottle. The doctor had returned to his office. It uh, I can't see the, the word. It. Uh, it was. was it was 11 o'clock, and Frank took down the sign about the breakfast special. A man came in frightened to ask for the special, and Frank pointed to the sign, which was upside down on the counter, and said, it's five minutes after 11 already, but I will give it to you. Uh, the look of dis dis despair? Despair. The look of despair faded from the man's face. Why? Why did the man have a look of despair, Shadow? What was he afraid of? I don't know. <laughs> well, Frank took down the sign. What did the sign say? Maybe it's the end. It's uh, the end of. I mean, it's the closed. end of what? What's I mean, closed? The pharmacy. Not the pharmacy. No, just breakfast. Oh, okay. He took down the breakfast sign, and the guy came in. It's five minutes late. Ah, oh, I'll give you breakfast. And the guy has this the look of despair. This is Miami Beach. People are panicked if they don't get their breakfast. Mm -hmm. The look of despair. Wh who is the pharmacist? Wh where are we? Are we in a restaurant? Wh who is the pharmacist? Is that clear, everyone? Mm -hmm. No, well, not really. Class. Cubicle. Cubicle. Yeah. What? What cubicle? Where? What? What? Where are we? I thought we were in a restaurant. Are we in a restaurant? In an office. I are we in an room. office? Because what? he said he went back to work. So. Um. Exactly. He went back to work, but he's inside the same space. So mm -hmm. guess what? In the 1950s, you used to have your lunch at the pharmacy. Did you know that? Um. <laughs> okay. Uh, be, before, in, in another story uh, we learned in this class, there is a, such a scene uh, in the pharmacy, maybe. I, yeah, I no? think there was, yeah. I don't remember the story, but I think you're right. I remember it more or less. Uh, maybe in the, um, probably in the Flannery O'Connor, or one of those short stories from the 50s. Yes. In the 1950s, in American culture, this is classic American culture, you'd go to the pharmacy, where they had a big machine that would make this new thing called Coca-Cola. <laughs> it was called a soda fountain. And they would mix seltzer, seltzer with, with syrup, bubbly water with syrup. And you could have your Coke. They could put different flavorings in it. You could have your cherry Coke, your vanilla Coke. They'd have food there, not all kinds of food, but just little things like sandwiches and pie. Right, so you'd go down to the pharmacy. Um, so there was an actual pharmacist. You could also buy drugs there. So the drugstore was a place where you could go and have food. Not anymore. That's a thing of the past. Clear, everyone? Mm -hmm. yes. So, so they're in the same place. Uh, okay, Shadow. Let's take. You only did one. So one more, and then we're going to go to Amir in a few days. Okay, in a few days, I finished my own job and began the long drive out of the false Florida. False Florida. False, false Florida summer into the northern winter. My heels passing over all sorts of unfelt beast beasties. Beasties. Beasties are like, you know, some kind of bugs, but you don't know what kind. Little beasties, little moving things. Okay. My gullet. Except expecting steaks, steaks? And, steaks and chops. My heart leaving with uh, no better will come to death than before. In Detroit, in Detroit, my daughter asked me what God's last name. How <laughs> the whole world? Where do you go when you die? <laughs> How old do you think his daughter is, Shadow? I'm, it's young, because this is Typical question we all used to ask. Yeah, although I'm kind of curious about that myself. What is God's last name? Anyone mm -hmm. know? 
<laughs> no. Oh, uh, okay. All right. Because that's a question I often ask myself. All right. Just curious. So we've ended this the Bromo Man episode, and now we're making a transition. He leaves Florida. He goes to Detroit, and he's got a conversation with his daughter. Shadow, one more question. Mm -hmm. That that strange line after my gullet. Gullet is what a bird has. A bird eats by crushing things in its throat called the gullet. So he doesn't really have a gullet. But what he means is his stomach is expecting meat. My gullet accepting steaks and chops. My heart leaping with no better welcome to death than before. Jeez, what does that mean? He leaves the Bromo episode with the man looking for the Bromo and he's got this line, my heart leaping with no better welcome to death than before. What do you think that means? Why does he mention death? What, what did the experience of the man and his wife and Frank, what did that do to him? I want you to make an ed educated guess. What, what, how, how did it make him feel? What did it leave him thinking? I think this guy's crazy, really. I don't know what to <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Does anyone else agree with Shadow? The guy's just crazy? It's insane. <laughs> okay. I, I kind of agree with you, in a way. He's definitely different. And in real life, the author was quite different. He was sort of a hippie and kind of a beatnik. But he was also a regular guy with a normal family and a job. So he kind of was in both worlds. Um, I think that experience was memorable in some way. And he's carrying it with him. So he has to comment on it when he goes back to reality. Reality is his daughter and Detroit. I think that's what he's getting at here. That this false isolation, this false madness that he's been involved in in Miami. He leaves it. The summer was false. He goes back to reality. But this experience didn't help him understand death or get ready for it any more than it, than it had before. He doesn't feel any better about death. Maybe he's in Miami to try to understand something. Maybe he's getting older and needs to understand something about about where life is going. I don't know. It's just an I idea. I think in usual life, he he don't think about the, uh, deeply about the death of life. And in this trip uh, in Miami, she he has a very he has an opportunity to feel the death of something. Maybe turtle's death, uh, uh, bugle's death. And here, uh, uh, persons <laughs> uh, disguising the death. So, so it is uh, for him. It is uh, uh, unusual uh, uh, moment. But uh, I think in reality, in everyday life, he's a normal father. I and I think he's he he's a excellent writer. Um, he's he's a very good writer. Yes. Th this um, now he's in the in the false madness when he's traveling around Miami. Yeah, I think that's a good point. Shadow and Dan and Daniel, maybe the reason you think he's crazy is because he is in this <laughs> place. He's crazy in this false madness. Maybe, maybe the whole reason that he went there, whether he knows it or not. Maybe he knows it on one level, but on a deeper level, he doesn't really, he didn't do it on purpose. But maybe he put himself there specifically to experience this. Or, alternatively, he really went to Miami to get away because he's a writer and he needs to sometimes get out of his house and get out of his routine. And these particular memories are being linked together. And what we're reading is a kind of recollection of the past. A little bit like Proust, <laughs> you know, he's mm -hmm. taking these certain memories and finding a link between them. And the link is something about uh, how you can experience death or that he's beginning to think about it, become conscious of it, maybe for the first time in his life. It's just a theory. So I agree with Yuki. I, I really agree. 
first it's something insignificant. He steps on he steps on a bug. He goes to a zoo and the animals are being killed, but it 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 makes him think. And then it's something serious. A man is dying. Oh, but it turns out he's not really dying. I think so, there is there need uh, some trigger to get into the another world. In the story right. of Proust, uh, narrator uh, in the first of story, narrator uh, sleep uh, tea and get into the long long story. Uh, here in the uh, narrator in this story, uh, he get traveled <laughs> in around Miami, and that that's a trigger. Uh, he, when he get to into the another world, absolutely. So, in Proust, he dips the he he dips the Madeleine into the tea or whatever he's drinking, <laughs> yes. and he has this sense memory. And here, the guy's station wagon or whatever it is 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 the trigger that opens up. So I think we're reading his his memories. I think I think that's what this comes down to. And we're not seeing his everyday life. So Shadow and Daniel. We didn't really see Detroit, and he knows that. He's just giving us enough details to say, oh, he's, he deals with reality too. And look at this. His daughter doesn't ask him, hey, how was your day? His daughter asks him the biggest questions possible. Is there a God? <laughs> how big is the universe? <laughs> what happens when you die? So it's like his daughter is already asking the same questions, and you know, like we all ask, but him, being a middle-aged man, he's just like, wow, you know, I used to ask those same questions, and now I'm asking them again, and I've forgotten. The last 40 years, I forgot about these questions. There's my daughter asking more profound questions than I did, so he's maybe that's part of the reason. <clears throat> um, um, Amir, uh, are you there, Amir? Hello, Amir? Amir, Amir? Hello, Amir? Hello? Hello, Amir? Is Amir sleeping? Ah, ah, there you are. Amir. Guess what, Amir? Yeah. We, we ran out of time, Amir. <laughs> yeah, no problem. Okay, maybe next time we can talk. Uh, yes, but I wanted to give you a chance to read, but we don't have time right now. So. Remind me of the next class, and I'm going to start with you, okay? Okay. Because I, I didn't give you a chance, and I, I apologize about that. Um, okay, so listen, everyone. Uh, I'm going to give you some instructions after class. I think for us to not spend um, a month on the story, I'm going to have to ask you to read to the end of part two, uh, or, or we can see if it's difficult, but I'm going to ask you to try to do that. And then we'll start with Amir in the next class. We'll add to our little uh, outline if we can. So that way you can keep looking at the big picture while you're reading the details in class. Okay? Send your questions and comments to me in the verbal chat. If there's anything I can help you understand, just let me know. I know these stories are not easy, but I think they're really worth it if you give it a chance. I'll be back in 30 seconds to start the business class. Bye for now. Talk Bye, to you yeah. soon. Bye-bye. Have a nice day all. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.